Where are you from? Uh, Rockland County. Rockland County. Anybody from Rockland here? Only shit. All right. What was your question? Who would you like to see be the next captain? Oh, I was going to ask that. I'm glad I did it. <laughs> who, who do you think will be the next uh, New York Ranger captain, guys? <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's go to management on this yes. one. <laughs> I, about the only thing I would say is I think you have to be patient and let the, the, the next captain will, uh, I think, you know, step to the forefront. There's a lot of character in that room. It's a younger team. Uh, certainly, they do have excellent leadership with Mark Stahl and Zook and, and uh, Hendrick. And when you have players like that that practice as hard as they do and as are dedicated and focused and hungry to win, it sets the bar so high for these young guys coming in. So I think it's less for me anyways. In the short term, it's less about who has a C on their, their uniform and more about uh, the energy of the team and, and setting uh, the tone and, and I think the environment for success and for this group to grow together and uh, hopefully get to the, the level that the, the last decade did except win that last game or, or you know, get to, to the next step because uh, uh, they did that with character. It was a character team here for the last decade. They accomplished a lot, although they never, they didn't win the, the, the cup since, uh, you know, in, in the last dozen years since only missed the playoffs once. They were a heck of a team and uh, they represented New York and, and Rangers and character guys and four of those guys you're going to see in Tampa Bay uniforms from our two ex-captains to, to Miller, uh, you know, to Girardi. Those are character players, you know, character people, uh, but again, it was an environment that they created within that locker room, and, and I think that they have three, and, and, and other guys as well, Chris Kreider, another guy coming back from his rib injury, removing a rib, and coming back and playing the way he has. And uh, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of character, but I'd be less concerned with the C, and more concerned with, with just you know, building that same type of, uh, I think, team character and chemistry that, that they had. And that starts in the dressing room. It starts with your leadership. They have a good leadership group uh, still remaining in that locker room. Thanks, Adam. Gentlemen, want to add to that? Next, next captain of the Rangers, any idea or? <laughs> I could throw Darko's out there, Jesper Faust. I just like, I like the way he plays. I think he's probably one of the uh, more intelligent players on the team. And I think him getting that uh, upgrade to the top line there shows that he's got a little more game in him than, than, than what he's shown in the past. So I just like the way he works. He's a hard, hard working kid. Uh, he's done everything that the Rangers have asked him to do for the last few years. Grish, what does it feel like to win a seat, Grish? Uh, you're looking for an answer or two. Man. Oh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know right now who I would, I would pick to be captain of the Rangers. What did it feel like to wear that? Oh, I mean, it was um, it was an honor, but I think there was when I was playing, there was a lot of guys that could have worked at the same time I did. So there was, you know, I mean, we had a lot of good guys in that team, and a lot of uh, character guys, and and it was uh, it was an honor to wear it. But I, I'm I'm trying to think who would be a good captain right now. There's a bunch of guys like Adam said, like you know, I mean, Foss is a good thing. I mean, he's a good player. He's He's a mucker, he's a penalty killer, he can play the power play, he can do it all, doesn't make many mistakes in his own half of the ice. And he, uh, he showed that he can score some goals and score some, go score some points. I will say, we have uh, quite a bit of time to figure that one out. Thanks guys, uh, next question from the, from the crowd. Any of my, my little guys, little girls wanna get asked a question right now? Don't be shy guys. This is the opportunity right here. All right, here we go, here we go. I was ready to ask him. What's up, dude? What, what's your name and where are you from? John, uh, California. What brings you all the way over here, John? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Let's give it up for John celebrating his 30th birthday. The only way to do it in your life is at the Madison Square Garden. It worked out perfectly, John. What's your question? This question for you guys is like, uh, did you always want to play for the Rangers or was there some other team that you might have like, you know, enjoyed and wanted to play for? Maybe like childhood teams? Would, would, would. Yeah, who do you guys root for growing up? Uh, I, I was born and raised in Toronto, but I, I was a Bruin fan, so I had to play against them. Uh, 
Then uh, I, I signed with the Rangers as a free agent uh, to go to their training camp. And I played New Haven the year before I got here. And I had an opportunity to sign with Philadelphia and Vancouver for the Rangers. And both Philadelphia and Vancouver offered me more money, but because I was part of the Ranger organization, I chose to sign here instead. There you go. You want to hang out with me. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take a step on that one. Um, living around Toronto, I mean, the Leafs, uh, it's Leafs country up there, and so, uh, uh, you know, I, it would have been really fun playing and being a Leaf. Uh, so, you know, it, all my friends and, you know, could come to the games and that kind of stuff. So, so Toronto was one of the teams that I, I always want. never had a chance to play there. But uh, uh, the other team, of course, we, as, a, as a young kid, Bobby Orr was my was my idol, and Gordy Howe was too. But Bobby Orr, so Boston. I thought Boston, being a small rink and being me a physical person, I thought that rink would have been perfect for me. So I would have loved to play in Boston. But when I got drafted, I remember, um, you know, there was a few teams. Philadelphia was after me. A few teams looking, you know, looking to pick me up. And all I kept hoping for was going to a team that would give me a chance to play. And it didn't matter which one, I just wanted a chance to play. Because I needed a little bit of uh, growth, I needed a little bit of experience, I needed to work with some good uh, fellow teammates, uh, you know, defensemen to, to hone my skills. And, uh, and so I got a chance to go to LA, where they were just, they had never kept a first round draft pick since 67. And so I got drafted in 79. They always traded away to pick up uh, an older player. And uh, so I was the first first rounder ever kept in, in LA. And that was the year that they started drafting and keeping their players and building you know, uh, a team. And so uh, LA was one of my top choices to, to go to LA and Atlanta, and I got my wish, so. Interesting, interesting. Adam Gresh, you wanna to add to this comment? Uh, Toronto and Daryl Silver was my favorite player. Uh, came here on a school trip when I was uh, in grade eight, I was 14 years old. City, just like his creation, of course. And, you know, 23 years later, I believe blue. Yeah, you do. You're right about that. Crash, did, did we get you on this one? Yeah, you did. <laughs> I don't think we did. <laughs> yeah, Crash. <laughs> uh, though I grew up uh, a West, uh, if you had ten, 10 kids playing hockey, you'd have uh, probably six Maple Leaf jerseys, three Montreal jerseys, and one somebody else. And uh, I was a Montreal Canadian fan because I liked John Belvo. Uh, I was his forward back when I was a kid growing up. And he played for Montreal. And um, in 1970, my sister uh, started dating this guy that was a New York Ranger fan. And they got married. And we went to, uh, he took me to a, a Ranger Vancouver Canucks uh, a game. And I sitting, we were sitting up, we had tickets way up on top. We ended up down by the glass, and Roger Bear was playing, the gag line was playing, Getty Jackman, all these guys in 1970, 71. And I, I kind of liked the Ranger uniform. And he turned me to a, into a Ranger fan, and then I ended up getting drafted by the Rangers. So, being one, I wanted to live here when I was a kid, and I got to play with him. Montreal was my favorite to start out with, but I ended up as a 40, Six year fan now of the Rangers. And my mother's 95. She's always been a Ranger fan now. Yes. She watches hockey. She can't see that well anymore. She can't hear, but she can hear all the machines when she goes to gamble. So she knows the hearing's not that bad, but she has her, head, her headphones on, watches it. She has an 80 inch TV. You can't come in the room and talk, can't say a thing. So she's a long time Ranger fan. And she remembers 1940. Wow. Let's give it up for Mama Crash. I remember, no, I remember, I remember Grady all the way in the camera. That was 1940. Remember that one? No, but you hold it in after they won the cup. That was something. That was special. So take that one out, our fans. That was special. I remember. I I want to add my uh, my '94 experience. I went to my first Ranger game. I'm in my. I was born in '82. I'm gonna say my age. Uh, about Same seven as my shoes. <laughs> about seven or eight, and I always loved Rangers because it was New York and Blades of Steel, which was a game on a Nintendo game. So I always identified with the New York Rangers. But 
that spring was the first time I was allowed to really watch hockey and I stayed up and I stayed at my dad's house. My parents weren't together. So my dad would cover me, my mom would call me, oh no, he's sleeping. Meanwhile, I'm watching the Rangers playoffs. You know, he would sneak me in there a little bit and then uh, I remember you guys beating the Islanders, uh, I forget who was the second team, then the Devils. And that, that series was just amazing. My dad let me stay up. We banged pots and pans and everybody in, in, in uh, the group of Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, went crazy on the streets and there was, there was nothing else like that. So let's salute, let's salute these guys real quick. Do you have any more free questions? All right, I have two. I'm getting to this guy first. What's your name, buddy? Where are you from? Who's your favorite to win the cup right now? Good question, Alex. Nice kicks. Favorite to win the cup right now, guys. I hate this. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yep, they're, they're the champions. You got to beat them. Makes sense. By you, Chris. Anybody but Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you feel that? I mean, I feel the same thing. I share, I share the same sentiment. People are remembering from last year. I'm not a big fan of Alex Ovechkin. Yeah. And that's just my opinion. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Toronto. How's that? That'd be nice to see, actually. Uh, I played there for four years, and it's not all what you guys think it was. Like, so. When was the last time they, they got a cup? Oh, 67. That'd be that'd be nice. Enough. That'd be nice. How about you, Jay? Long shot. Long shot. Vegas. Wow, that'd be really nice. I think that'd just be so cool, that's all. There's no reason why I cheer for them. They started out hot. So cool, first year when I got that'd be awesome. Have, have you guys had a chance to check out a game there this, this, this season? I got you, It's amazing. I would have went, but they didn't close the casino. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Adam? Do you have a, a favorite to win a cup this year? Well, I have a favorite, but we're not in the playoffs. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say out west, uh, Nashville's probably got a good shot. Winnipeg, we never know one of it, especially these early rounds. If you're not ready to play, like uh, Tampa, you know, they've, uh, they should be favored probably in the East, but they've got Boston and Toronto, and two of those teams have to go through each other in the first round. So that's uh, where, where, where it's tough, but uh, that, that's the best part of the game now. There's so much parity. That first round is some of the best hockey uh, going. You just don't know who's gonna, who's gonna get through, who's gonna beat two, but uh, Pittsburgh's always, uh, when you're, you're trying to beat the champion, it's always a tough team to beat. So, I don't know, uh, toss it the hat, and it'll be exciting. I'm looking forward to watching But Adam, Adam is right, though. Those first two weeks in the playoffs are the best time for sports in the world. I love that because there's games all the time. That's exciting, a lot of upsets. Uh, I'm gonna get to the next, raise your hand for the next question. In the meantime, what do you guys feel about the alignment, the playoff alignment, uh, realignment that happened in the last few seasons? You guys like it? No. <laughs> Why not, Chris? No, because what just Adam just said there, you're going to have two of the top three teams that, in the East that are possibly going to be out within the first two rounds. That doesn't make any sense to me. I'd like it to go back to the way where you, you seated everybody from one to eight, and that's the way it goes, instead of you know, having it the way it is now, where a couple of really, really good teams might be out of the playoffs in the first round. It just doesn't work out right to me. It doesn't make sense. Go one to 16. I like that. Like that. That way, that way, uh, you know, had last year you had Pittsburgh and Washington in the second round, number one in the league, and number three in the league, playing right off the bat. The, the, the WNBA just adopted that little two seasons ago. It's uh, not bad so far. Adam J, want to uh, add on that? I think the one, I think one in six seeds is the way to go. I mean, it's not as good a hockey uh, in the first round. But uh, because obviously, you know, the first seed should beat the 16th seed every time. Uh, but I still, uh, I still think that that's the fairest way to do it. And uh, like I say, too many good teams get knocked out just because, or get banged up because they're playing certain teams and, uh, and uh, they lose their shot. And I just don't think that's fair. Thanks, Jay. Adam? Sounds good. All right, so our final. <laughs> you had an easy one this is set. Adam, next time you're going to be uh, next to me in the front. <laughs> final question of the afternoon, sir. What's your name and where are you from? Uh, Andrew, and I live in Jersey, but I was born in Brooklyn, so. so he's a Ranger guy. He's a Ranger guy. Uh, what's your question, Adam? 
Um, yeah, sorry. No <laughs> Uh, so back in 94, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what Messier said, basically suggesting, you know, guaranteeing the, the cup for New York, and I'm just wondering uh, what kind of, you know, talk did that cause in the, in the locker room or pressure did it put on you guys to uh, get out there and win? They put the pressure on me, bro. <laughs> it was my best game. Uh, actually, Mark, you didn't say anything in the dress room put pressure on, 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 on in all honesty. It was a question that was asked, I think, in the morning, uh, the, the previous day's practice. And we had, it was going into New Jersey, we had, uh, we were up 2-1. to one. They came back and uh, tied the series at 2-2. Two, two. Um, and then, uh, whatever reason, we kind of lost, lost a little bit of momentum and went back home and lost 5-1. I think that Mark just felt like the team needed a jolt of, of confidence. And when asked in between games, which is always a day in between in practice, he basically just said, uh, you know, guaranteeing the win. Uh, he woke up the next day, it was in all the papers, and he went out and scored a hat trick. So uh, something that uh, not too many players can, can do. And, and I will tell you, if you had to pick one player and you only had to win one game, you'd be, there's obviously great players, but that's why Mark would be up with the top five or six, uh, seven, you can argue. We're, we're probably a little more biased because we had the opportunity to ski alongside and sit with him in the locker room and, and, and certainly benefit from his teachings and what he meant. Uh, but I think about game four in 1990 in the playoffs in Chicago. Might have been the single best game I've ever seen a player play in a dominated game. And he had two goals and two assists for the Edmonton Oilers. I was an Oiler at the time. And we beat Chicago in Chicago Stadium. I don't think I've ever seen a player dominate or, or play that well in a meaningful game. And then to see him do that again in game six against the Devils, it did surprise me because I had seen it before. Um, that's what made, made Mark captain. That's what made him a six-time Stanley Cup champion, two-time Park Trophy winner, one of the greatest leaders in, in sport. 